اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الصلاۃ والسلام علی سیدنا محمد و علی علیہ و اصحابہ و اہل بیتہ اجمعین سو دس از ا سسٹر فرام یورپ شی ہیز ناٹ مینشنڈ ہر نیم بٹ شی ہیز آسٹ اے فیو کویشچن سو دس از دا سیکنڈ ون وی ہیو کورڈ دا ادر کویشچن فرام ہر ان انادر ویڈیو کلپ دیٹ یو گائز مائٹ ہیو سین آن آر چینل So second question uh, that she has asked is that uh, as we already think and imagine that Muhammad Qasim bin Abdul Karim a person from uh, Lahore Pakistan uh, we we think that he can be uh, he could be uh, Imam al Mahdi in future So her question is that uh, Muhammad she she has seen some Uh, content some advice some dreams uh, of uh, Muhammad Qasim on on the internet or probably on YouTube and uh, she is asking that Muhammad Qasim seems to be advising uh, uh, a politician that if he doesn't make such and such mistakes uh, he would be successful in next uh, elections uh, so her question is that uh, she thinks and believes that uh, that uh, this democracy and democratic system this whole electoral electoral i'm sorry uh, electoral process uh, is a form of shirk because it is not according to sharia and this was not the system of islam at the time of nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so Uh, she's saying that it is equivalent to advising uh, to a kafir. That's uh, because uh, the politicians follow this uh, democratic system. That's what her point, point of view is. I've summarized this for you because it was a very, very long, several paragraphs uh, in which she described her question. So I've summarized this question for you uh, that she thinks that democratic system is a system of shirk and the people committing it or involved in it could be uh, could be compared to kafirs and how come is it possible that uh, a person who is expected to become imam al mahdi in future would be advising uh, nauzubillah as per she is saying a kafir uh, about the democratic system uh, more or less she is what uh, this is what she is trying to say So uh, first of all sister um takfir is not the way of Islam uh, and there is a very clear saying of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, in which uh, he advised the muslims to not call other muslims kafirs because of their sins even though uh, even though we think they they are very outrageous and once nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was advising the sahaba and sahaba and he sallallahu alaihi wasallam was advising sahaba about shirk and then sahaba asked nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam o oh, prophet of allah is it possible to have shirk in muslims in mu'mins as well and nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied yes and finding shirk detecting shirk recognizing shirk in the heart of a mu'min heart of a muslim uh, is as difficult or more difficult than 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 finding a black colored ant on a black colored stone in a very dark black night that's how small and subtle shirk can be and it can be in the heart of even mu'mins so there is there are two types of shirk there there is there is an shirk that is exposed shirk and then there is uh khafi shirk there is minor shirk so there could be things that people would be doing not thinking that it is shirk that would still be shirk but the person committing it becomes sinful not the kafir but his sin is a huge sin it's a shirk obviously just like we know that in the shirk al-zulm al-azim it stays 
the biggest sin and also uh, in allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika min sha allah will not forgive uh, the shirk unless uh, you repent and uh, and and uh, stop uh, involving yourself in shirk either you are muslim or non muslim but it this does not make does not expel one out of the circle of islam it only expels one out of the circle of islam if you commit if that person commits the sin a shirk knowingly and also that shirk is a very exposed form of shirk like shirk akbar like prostrating uh, to to the idols worshiping idols and uh, similar stuff and that's very very up uh, far to the corner and it is very unlikely for the common muslim to reach that point unless they deliberately do such a thing uh, and they they deliberately, uh, deliberately uh, do their actions uh, against their uh, beliefs in islam as far as democracy is concerned yes it could be a form of shirk personally i agree that it is not the system of islam and i agree that because the democracy gives all of the powers to 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 the masses to the people and democracy stretches it to the level that uh, if the people vote something out or vote something in either it is against allah's uh, rules it is against allah's guidance uh it will still be implemented that's what democracy says but that's the true democracy but in the case of pakistan um that's not the case uh our constitution starts that the the highest ownership of hukm of leadership of ownership stays with the law subhanahu wa ta'ala and pakistan's democracy is defined it's it's under the umbrella of islam over here the democracy cannot choose anything that is out of the bounds of islam so it is just like uh voting in your own home that you are going to have a pizza or chicken both are halal but you vote it you you democratically select and pick um which one you you guys are ordering today so it is still not the form of not the islam it is still not the system of khilafa but it is not that form of shirk like it is in the west that they can vote um uh, same sex marriages they can vote uh, anything in and uh, they can vote uh, in in favor of abortion they can do anything and democracy would approve it that's not the case over here in pakistan so it does not make it at as outrageous a shirk as outrageous uh a kufr as outrageous a sin as it is in the west uh, that's the, uh that's one thing second thing is that uh in islam it has been made very clear that however your leaders are doing the muslim leadership who are running a muslim um government a muslim government not necessarily islamic government, who are running a muslim government and they are muslims and even though they are involved in sins and they are involved in different forms of uh, and they have the shortcomings in islam there is no allowance there is no permission to go against them in in an armed way you cannot pick your arms and go fight your uh, leaders it has been made very clear in islam we have a whole series uh, uh, not series actually several uh, audio, uh, se- several clips uh, and lectures on the topic of khawarij so whoever goes against a muslim a ruler uh, either either that muslim ruler is sinful or not uh, either he is uh, he's a uh, he's a uh, um, like um, you know, true muslim or not through his actions uh you cannot go against your muslim rulers you you cannot even go against in an armed way against the non muslim rulers uh, we have uh, explained uh, in detail in other uh, video so so it is very clear so since the rulers are muslims so 
it is a way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is conveying, relaying the message of truth to them through uh, Brother Muhammad Qasim, who can be uh, Imam al Mahdi in future, so that they are given a chance of Islah. So that they are given a chance of Islah. Uh, so it is uh, like the formalities uh, fulfilled so that it becomes uh, it becomes uh, something in their favor or against in hereafter so they cannot say that the message does not the message of uh, of of islah the message of curing themselves or fixing themselves did not reach them so this is uh, this is what it is happening so they are the muslim rulers uh, but since you mentioned about the kufr about the non muslim rulers as well first of all be very clear uh, that the that these does not the, these does not fall under uh, under those uh, non-Muslim rulers. But even if it was someone non-Muslim, or even if it was happening in a non-Muslim country, even then this is the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. What happened? Look, in the case of Musa Alayhi Salam, he was ordered to go and preach, go and preach Firaun go and preach the pharaoh and 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 he was told to take allah's message to to the pharaoh so that he could fix so that he had the chance to fix himself and what happened in the case of nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he wrote letters to the non muslim rulers uh, all around he took his message of dawa to the non muslim um, uh, tribal uh, leaders of mecca so if either way, this is the way of Islam that you that that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala sends the message uh, through its uh, like the preaching reaches the message reaches to the rulers as well. It is an important part of Dawa. Uh, there is nothing wrong in it. Uh, either they will be fixed, they would get uh, like um, uh, material benefits out of that, or not is a different case. Um, but in the case of uh, non-Muslim rulers. If they follow Islam, Islam does not make them leave their seats. Islam does not make them leave their seats. If they follow Islam, they accept Islam, they can be the rulers along with all of their uh, people. So similarly, uh, in the case of Muslim rulers, if, they, if Brother Qasim has advised something to uh, the Muslim rulers who are not upon Islam uh, in the way we expect them to, uh, if they fix themselves like in a similar fashion Allah wills them uh, to fix uh, themselves then they can they can still be the rulers and they can fix the whole nation there is nothing wrong in it so uh, that's uh, that's the logic behind it and um, I hope it clears your uh, uh, clears your mind Jazakallah